way back a long time ago. I reviewed a movie called Gothica, and in that, I said that I was going to change my format a little bit to give people a chance to decide whether or not they want to watch that movie that I'm talking about, or if they want to just watch my review and hear my thoughts on it before bothering. I never really made good on that promise, and I'm sorry for that. That was my bad. I just couldn't think of a good way of doing it until now. And who's to say that this is a good idea? It could be just as stupid as the rest of my ideas. Yay. The problem that I struggled with there is that I have a very different storytelling philosophy than most people. I don't get upset usually when there are spoilers, mainly because regardless of the movie being spoiled for me, what I care about is how the storyteller goes about illustrating that. It doesn't matter to me necessarily that Snape kills Dumbledore, to use one of the most common examples in the world. It matters to me how and why he does that. Every other question is irrelevant. But I understand that not everyone has that same philosophy that I do towards spoilers, so what I'm going to do is give a brief synopsis about the movie, my basic thoughts about the movie. I'm going to try my best to keep it spoiler free, only spoil things that are in the trailer. Then you guys can make an educated decision. So let's get started. I want to open this by saying Morbius is bad and you shouldn't watch it. It's, it's not. There's nothing good about it, really. I genuinely try my best to come up with some positives, generally, for these reviews, because I don't like being negative about movies. I love creative processes, and I never want to discourage anyone from doing more creative stuff. But this movie is just not good. I'm going to talk about it. I have things to say about it. But it's not really going to be a positive review. So the base concept of the movie is that we have Jared Leto as Dr. Michael Morbius. He has a major degenerative blood disease that is undefined that causes him to need to walk around in crutches, and that's, uh, that's his character. He's a very smart doctor, and he's disabled. That's his characterization at the beginning of the movie. He's personable, I guess. That's all you can really say about him. He does an experiment to cure his disease, and he makes himself into a vampire. His friend Milo also has the same disease. That's how they bonded, I guess. He also becomes a vampire. They have different vampire philosophies. It's basically just every superhero origin movie thrown in with a bit of interview with the vampire to give it some flavor. And it's boring. It's just really, really boring. The movie is only an hour and 44 minutes long feels way longer. Now, it doesn't feel BVS long because nothing feels as long as BVS does, but it is only slightly less than half the length of that movie, and I was feeling it. I felt it the entire way through. I do not recommend this movie. Beyond that, it just has all of the classic vampire themes. It has vampirism as a metaphor for carnal desire, meaning either sexual desire or specifically homosexual desire, and we'll get to that in my next video, which is going to be about the themes. And Sony was trying to recreate their nominal success that they had with Venom, and that didn't work, mainly because they misunderstood what makes Venom interesting. They just did. Venom is an anti-hero, and Venom, as an anti-hero in that movie, is done correctly. In this movie, it's not. Michael Morbius is an unapologetically good person who makes, like, one or two ethically, like, off decisions, and everything else he does is the actions of a saint, quite frankly. But if you want to hear me go into more detail about this movie, I'm going to do that in the next video. Please feel free to watch that. If you would prefer to watch literally any other movie, I would suggest that. I can't think of a movie that I had a worse time with recently that wasn't in the Snyderverse. See you in the next video, hopefully.